Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is the Growth Infrastructure and Waste Committee, uh, the first one for this year, on the 9th of February 2023. I'd like to welcome the, we have quite a few people in the, the public gallery. Thank you very much for coming in. Really appreciate you making the time out of your day um, to contribute to our community. So thank you very much. I'll call council attendance, noting that I've had, um, the Deputy Mayor has been held up by about 10 or 15 minutes, so we do expect him soon. Uh, and all other councillors are in attendance. I'll now move on to acknowledgement of country. If City Council respectfully acknowledges the traditional owners as custodians of the land upon which we meet. We pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging as the keepers of the traditions, cultures and stories of a proud people. I now call for any declarations of interest on any of the matters on the agenda today. Yes, Councillor Tully. Yeah, uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, I make a declaration in relation to item three of the officer's report on page 26 in relation to the yes. Worrell Park Cemetery, uh, Law, sorry, Worrell Park Lawn Cemetery. Uh, the um, potential conflict of interest is that I'm a um, trustee of the Goodness Cemetery Trust. Um, I don't receive any remuneration from that. I don't believe there's a substantial uh, connection or conflict uh, between the two matters, but as a precautionary measure, I make this declaration. Thank you. So are there, is there any um, personal interest for you? Um, no, no personal interest, no no payments, no receipt or, or okay. anything of any nature. Would anyone like to ask um, Council any other questions in regard to this declared conflict of interest? No? In that case, in accordance with section 150EQ, Oh, sorry, I should ask, how would you like this dealt with? Um, well, it, I, I didn't, subject to the decision of council, I'd be happy to uh, remain in the meeting and vote on the matter. Okay. I move that Councillor Paul Tully participates and votes on, on item three in, in today's meeting, titled Worrell Park Lawn Cemetery Master Plan Report. Uh, because um, there is no personal financial benefit to the councillor and therefore a reasonable person would trust that the final decision is made in the public interest. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Kornzelman. Any discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour? I know all councillors have put their hand up and uh, Councillor Tully has not voted. Thank you. Are there any other declarations of interest? Thank you. We move on to item one, which is a um, matter outstanding, which is a response to petition, request for sound barrier at Red Bank Motorway Industrial Estate. So on the 13th of July 2022, a petition was provided to council seeking action and effective consultation in respect to the Red Bank Motorway Estate and reported impacts on the nearby community of Mogul and Belbarry. This petition was presented and accepted by council at the meeting on the 28th of August 2022. And this report seeks to provide some, an update consisting of some background to the submission and the actions taken to date so far. So may I ask the relevant council officer to come to the lectern, please? Um, to you, Mayor, while we're waiting on Mr Davey to get to the lectern, yes. um, to remind the group that there was some coro sent out this morning. Yep. Oh, sorry, okay. Thank you. Um, Yesterday we received some um, correspondence from the, the people that um, put in this petition and um, that was being sent out just this morning. So if you haven't received it, I'll let you log on to have a look at it. Um, it was some feedback from residents, um, some of the concerns they had uh, with the report. Um, so I'm tabling those two documents and they'll be included in the minutes as well. And uh, thank you very much for it. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Brett Davey, Manager, City Design. Thank you. Um, I know you've got the report um, in front of us and what, what happened, but um, I guess for me, I note that this was a, it's, it's a two neighbours um, having an issue. Um, and obviously we council have been strongly recommending the two neighbours to sit down together. Um, I understand that's happened. How are things pro have progressed? Uh, yes, thanks for the question, Mayor. Certainly the, uh, my involvement in this commenced in late February last year. Um, I had previously been involved during some construction activities on site through 2018 from recollection. The, my first step was to try and get the parties together to understand the issues better and to work on some potential solutions to some of the issues. Mm -hmm. Obviously the petition came in a bit after that involvement. 
uh, but I think on the whole, the uh, approach of getting the relevant operators and the developer Goodman together has been fruitful in understanding each other's issues and there have been some operational improvements and some improvements in responsiveness. Um, certainly the issues aren't all resolved. Thank you. Uh, in regards to the land there, obviously there's been industrial stuff in the, in the southern part since the 50s. Um, do you mind letting me know um, how long has that area been zoned industrial? Yeah, of course. I did go back beyond 1999, mm -hmm. but certainly in the 1999 planning scheme, this area was designated for industrial purposes. The entire area? The entire, entire area. 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 There was uh, always a buffer along the, the riverbank, essentially. Uh, the issue may have been that the most intensive industry activity was concentrated in the south as historic uses, um, and there was some development around that precinct, but the far northern end of the peninsula would have always looked like a grass paddock. Right. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone else have any other questions of Mr Davey? Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, Councillor Figgis. Um, with regards to the line of communication between residents and the operators, has that improved over time? I note that the report says that there was a meeting late last year um, where people are getting around the table and actually have a forum to air their grievances. Um, so ha has that improved is my first question. And secondly, is there a date for a second follow-up meeting with all of the residents and the operators? Uh, yes, thank you. The lines of communication, I don't think I'd be misrepresenting the situation by saying it's improved. Uh, so between ourselves, the council and the community uh, and the developer and operators and the community, there were a series of meetings uh, through the last six months of last year with operators and a more generalised discussion between the developer, ourselves and uh, some of the residents. Uh, the next meetings, I think, are set for March where we'll have a follow-up meeting with one of the operators as well as a follow-up meeting potentially with the developer. Um, I know the report touches on new home buyers and their awareness more broadly of the potential surrounding impacts. Most prominently here in Ipswich, um, we see this in flood affected properties, but this issue highlights the need for knowledge in surrounding um, areas with regards to um, land use and the planning scheme. The report also goes on to mention um, the importance of engagement to help improving understand, understanding in this regard. Um, so just thinking about the new planning scheme, um, is there an opportunity to involve the residents of Mogul, Prize Pocket and Bell Barry uh, when engaging with the new planning scheme? Yes, so on the first point, um, I understand there was some concern from some members of the, the affected community with the commentary in the report on that. Um, essentially, my commentary wasn't directed specifically at them, but more as a general issue that the community aren't aware of planning issues and um, those that are, it takes a, a lot of work to get there. Um, I know from the description from them that they spent, some of them spent a lot of money on searches before they purchase a property to not be made aware of these issues. And so it's just an example of, uh, you know, how difficult it is for the community to get information. So with the new scheme, uh, we are drafting an electronic scheme and we are um, using that method to help uh, make the, the information easier to digest. And certainly there'll be an opportunity for the broader community, regardless of whether they're within our local government area or outside of it, to make comments, including adjoining councils. Thank you. I think Councillor Tully had a question. Yeah, just to clarify, you said you hadn't gone back prior to 1999 in relation to the zoning? No. Yeah, my recollection is that it was zoned rural, which is sort of a holding zone in those days for um, uses that might emerge in the future be it residential or, or of an industrial nature, and that was you know, always the thinking the, you know, during that period of time. Yep. Um, at one stage, they were planning to put a radioactive waste dump there um, uh, and take it from uh, Brisbane to <coughs> Red Bank. Fortunately, yes. ended up at Red Bank Creek in, near Esk. Yeah, quite possibly you're correct uh, in that the previous planning scheme to that was the amalgamated planning scheme post the amalgamation of Ipswich and Morton, uh, where there wasn't a clear future of a piece of land, it was just so rural. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr Davey? Thank you, Mr Davey. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to make a slight, uh, add another uh, recommendation. So far it says that the report be received and noted. 
I'd like to make that A and B uh, for Council to update us in six months. I know that there's been a significant... Um, and Mr Davey has been sharing emails between the residents as well, so we know that there's significant progress has been made, but we'd like to still keep abreast of that, knowing that he will raise things. Up. And I'm sure the residents will come to us if anything significant is raised, but I would like an update in the next six months, so I'd like to propose that as... I'll second that. Thank you very much, Councillor Heckner. It's been seconded. I'll open it up for discussion. Um, the report outlines a series of outcomes, issues, resolved, continuing or otherwise. There is one express recommendation in here and it's that mm. um, Council provides a submission to DES for the consideration of updated controls and guidance relating to the use of tonal beepers in the community. Mm. Um, so I just wanted to note that that is a recommendation that's contained within this report. Um, that we're noting um, and if there's any material benefit to actually calling it out on its own or whether okay. leaving it in there and we leave it up to um, the organisation. Okay, I'm just looking at Mr Davey to see. Morning again. Uh, the recommendation in there is essentially an action for uh, us as officers rather than a council, but happy for that to be elevated to a, a council recommendation if that would be the preference. The uh, short summary of that issue is tonal beepers are used quite frequently as a safety device and from my understanding of the circumstances, the sound of the tonal beepers is one of the primary issues in this case. Normally a logistics use would be quite quiet as in it's not heavy manufacturing but the movement of vehicles and forklifts and other devices that have tonal beepers on them is a problem. Now, in, a, in the compliance world, it's not so easy to take action on those things because they are also a safety device. Yeah. So there are other standards in other states that have different arrangements. It's probably something that DES need to look at given some of the, these examples where you've got land use conflict. Thank you. Well raised. Thank you, Councillor Fickner. Yeah. I guess my other thing is uh, in this discussion is how important it is for neighbours to sit down. I know um, last year the residents sort of asked council to, to, um, to, to come in and I think it's really important to know that the first thing neighbours need to sit down and discuss things together and then obviously if that can't work then obviously council um, may assist. But um, I think it's be, there's been great progress noting that when everyone's in the same room you can actually um, achieve some common ground and get some progress. So if there's no other discussion I'll... Put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Um, so you know, I note that the Deputy Mayor just came so you probably can't vote. Uh, those against? Uh, those abstaining? Thank you, Deputy Mayor. So that's passed. We now move on to item two, which are the um, minutes of uh, the Growth Infrastructure and Waste Committee meeting the, 20, uh, the 29th of November 2022. Um, and any questions on those minutes? I'll move these minutes. Do I have a seconder? Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. Any discussion or any corrections? No, nope. I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. Thank you. We we'll now move on to item three which is the Worrell Park Lawn Cemetery Master Plan Report. And this is a report considering a review of the concept master plan for the Worrell Park Lawn Cemetery. Uh, cemetery master planning is, an integral, is integral to ensuring best use of the asset, inventory management, and to inform capital budget and work scheduling. The review of the Worrell Park Master Plan considered the practicalities of the proposed construction, requirements for the protected vegetation of Melaleuca urbiana, and flood levels. It was determined that adjustments to the current concept would be required. May I ask for the relevant council officer to come to the lectern, please? Good 
Morning, Mayor and Councillors. Graham Schultz, um, Principal Officer with um, Projects in the Compliance Branch. Thank you, Mr Schultz. Thank you very much for coming to the lectern here. No worries. Uh, thank you for this report. Um, just querying in the report, there's, um, I think, on page 27, it talks about the fact that the extent of the stringent environmental protection requirements seem to be underestimated with the current master planning. Do you mind explaining that a bit further? Um, with the um, Melaleuca Ibiana, it was protected at the time of that um, previous master plan. And um, it, there was a lot of requirements about doing environmental studies um, prior to doing any works within that area. Um, the master plan talks about doing burials and um, other activities within that area, which would have required those environmental studies to be done, and it doesn't appear that those were carried out at the time. Yeah. So therefore, you know, any works within that area that were carried out may have been deemed to be unlawful. Okay. So what's council going to do, or what's, how are you working with Norwood to, to address that? Um, what we've done is obviously consulted with Norwood and also consulted with the, um, the federal government in regards to that. Uh, we had some environmental studies undertaken and got some recommendations from that. We've got a, um, uh, that environmental report was also approved by the federal government um, okay. in regards to those negotiations. So we're following the recommendations okay. of that report in any of our future works there. And so the recommendation of that report is carried over into this revised concept plan? That's correct. Okay, yep. thank you. Um, I note too that it talked about the fact that um, I guess when we entered a deed of agreement in 2011 with Norwood, they were um, had to do a master plan, mm -hmm. and it came to council I think in 2013. Um, was there any funding for the program for the master plan between 2013 and 2018? Um, not that I'm not okay. that I'm aware of um, through council. Okay. Like the the construction of those. Um, well, the master plan itself was actually prepared by Norwood. Um, so, do you mean the, just the master plan? Or? Obviously, there's the master plan. I meant um, the master plan obviously has a, a number of works on there. Mm -hmm. Was there anything budgeted in Council's capital budget from 2013 and 18 to, to carry any of the works that were on there? There appears, when you go back through some of the records, there appears to be some funding that okay. was um, shared by Council, but the majority of it was, um, was contributed through in Norwood. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other questions of Mr Schultz? No, thank you. No worries. Thank you. So I'll remove recommendations A and B. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Island. Any discussion? Um, maybe just a yeah. question for the CEO around this development period that we'll potentially go into if Council chooses to adopt the recommendations this morning. Will there be, um, I guess, opportunity or touch points for councillors to get involved in brief before it actually hits us back here at GIW? Uh, through the chair, we can certainly um, work to ensure that by providing you with updates. Is that what you're looking for? Yep. Thank you. We can action that. Okay. Would you like that as an additional motion? I'm Council happy to take the CEO's advice. <laughs> yep. Thank you. I suppose discussion, um, I, um, I think it was very interesting to see the, the flood mapping and the obviously the impact it has on the usable land um, there. So I think it's quite prudent for us to, um, to update this master plan uh, in accordance with the known uh, information that we have now with flood mapping. So thank you. Any other discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you, it's unanimous and carried. Now move on to item four, which is the Regional Planning Interest Act of 2014, application 22 slash 009, Austral Bricks Mount Walker request for comments. This is a report concerning a response to the Department of State Development, Infrastructure, Local Government and Planning regarding an application for clay mining exploration activities made under the Regional Planning Interest Act of 2014 by Austral Bricks. Council is an assessing agency under the Regional Planning Interest Regulation of 2014 and has been requested to provide the department with details of any further information required to be provided by the applicant to assist in the assessment of the application. May I ask the relevant council officer to come to the lectern, please? Good morning, Anthony Bowles, Acting Development Planning Manager. Thank you, Mr Bowles. Um, do you mind just um, explaining, this is just to, for exploration, this is not for the mining? That's correct. So the permit being sought by Austral is for 
exploration activities only uh, mm -hmm. for cl potential clay deposits in this in the areas located on the plans. What that will look like in function is essentially a um, a ute or a truck similar to a soil testing truck with their borehole drill. Um, they will go to various sites, drill some boreholes and determine if there's a resource worth further investigation. Uh, and if there is, um, we should expect to see a further application in a similar process uh, for council's consideration. But the, the activity itself is, is simply a, a you driving around with a, a few um, team members doing okay. the core drilling. So hypothetically, if it did come back that it was suitable, what would be the process and how can the public participate in any further decisions? So the, the, this, this type of application is managed through the state and we are essentially like a concurrence agency like we are under the Planning Act. It's, a, it's, a, it's sort of a bit of a roles reverse scenario. Whereas so we're, we're, not, we're not the approver? Not essentially, it's the no. state, okay. Yeah, so we, we're an assessing agency and we provide comments um, which we'll, we will approach in a similar way to as if we were assessing the application ourselves. Um, uh, so the, the details of the application are available on the state government website and there is a consultation process that um, is similar to, again, the Planning Act process. So the community will be able to have a say in that, um, but that will be subject to a future application. Okay. Um, the, this type of application is quite uncommon. There's only been two in Queensland under this type of um, arrangement. Mm -hmm. Most of the applications are areas outside of the urban footprint. Um, so haven't had a huge amount of experience, certainly not me personally, so I'm not sure how well it'll go, but um, there will be a process of consultation in a future application. Okay. Um, do Austral need the landowner's permission to do this, or is that done through the state? Th they will still need um, permission to access the site. Right, yeah. so, yeah. so if a landowner doesn't want it, they can refuse? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So they, they, they certainly, it's similar to any scenario where you'd have people accessing your property, you, know, you need to provide right. some consent to do that, yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Council Island, would you like to ask a question? Thank you. Um, Mr Bowles, I guess I'm concerned about who will condition the, the roads. If it does go ahead and they start mining for um, clay, who will be the assessment agent, agent to look at Mount Walker Road? Well, um, certainly that would be an important part of our comments on a future application. Um, we would be seeking upgrades for any, if there's any large volume of additional vehicles on those roads, um, we would be re requiring updates. That is just on making a fairly large assumption that all the other impacts can be managed. Um, my, clay mining is different to coal mining in that it can have lesser impacts on amenity, but it can still be quite dusty, still quite a large number of vehicles. So um, it would depend on the scale of the mine, on what upgrades would we require, but I would have an expectation that Austral would be upgrading roads if required to manage the vehicles of the use. Um, so um, that's, just, again, making assumptions about the suitability of the site from amenity perspectives. Um, if they decided to build a kiln out there to do the bricks, do we get a say on that as well? I know that it's futuristic, but I'm just wondering what... what it, it would also would be subject to an application. Um, the kiln itself, if that was separate to the mining activity and didn't require mining lease, that would probably be something we'd have more control over. It'd be more of a council assessment of a material change of use application. Um, but I, I've got no indication that that's the case. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Fick? Um, keen to explore what powers are afforded to us um, as an assessing agency. Um, my mind goes to the comments we often give to the P Department of Education when it comes to managing the broader traffic network when schools mm. are built and often they're just noted um, and often they, they don't take our recommendations on how to deal with those things. Is this a similar case here? Um, in my conversations with counterpart officers, it's, it is a bit different. Um, there is greater consideration of the information we, we seek um, and the concerns that we note. Um, the Act has fairly, um, sim uh, maybe not simplistic, but um, fairly specific requirements for the assessment of the application. It isn't like a whole planning scheme. There's um, just two schedules under the Act with requirements relating to possible impacts on amenity um, and the likelihood of um, a use having an impact on an amenity. What, what I've been told is that the, um, if there is great concern from council, it is given quite a, a great deal of consideration in deciding the application. It is, it is different process than the advice that we provide on ministerial designations. 
And I think the reason for that is because we are assigned a responsibility under the Act to provide comments and provide feedback rather than something that is probably done more as a courtesy than anything uh, and sometimes. So um, we, we have a role and when we contribute to that, I think we're given great consideration in making a decision. Thank you, Councillor. Any other questions of Mr Bowles? Thank you, Mr Bowles. Thank you. So I'll move the recommendation that Council provide the response to the department as set out in attach attachment one, which is the letter. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Fickner. Anything to, in dis we'll move into discussion. I guess I note that Council is an assessing agency and at this stage we've been asked to provide feedback on um, the exploration. And I note the letter talks about the fact that it's a low impact just to do that that boring. But I also note that Council has provided the feedback to um, the department uh, that if future mining activities would um, have potential impacts on the amenity of the existing residents, including nearby tourism uses, and that the existing road infrastructure will be heavily impacted by any um, future mining uses as well. Any other discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. It's unanimous and carried. We now move on to item five, which is the exercise of delegation report. And this is a report concerning the applications that have been determined by delegated authority for the period of 15th of November, 2022 to the 24th of January, 2023. May I ask the relevant council officer to come to the lectern, please? Good morning, Anthony Bowles, I think. Development Planning Manager. Mr Bowles, I, I note um, obviously Council back on the 8th of December refused the NUGA application, mm -hmm. um, which is 7213-214-MAMC-D. Um, and I, we set that off on the 13th of December. I notice that they have now put in a, uh, a notice of appeal. Um, may I ask you what would be the cost to the rate pays for the appeal and, and what kind of impact it is on our, on our staff and man hours? Certainly. Um, uh, unfortunately, it's a little difficult to give a definitive answer on something like that or a matter like this. Um, uh, we're also still in the process of obtaining fee estimates, so a little, a little bit early for me to give you anything definitive. Uh, I can estimate based on prior and personal experience with other appeals. Yep. Um, the matter is likely to have quite a few meetings and require quite a few experts um, in providing advice to council on a way forward and potential resolution. Um, because of the inclusion of several experts, so we're talking stormwater, odour, um, potentially traffic and potentially other experts depending on matters that arise, um, it's likely to be an expensive appeal. Um, and it could be somewhere between 200 to you know 800,000, which is such a broad, amount. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not really able to, to estimate. Um, our experience in the waste appeals is in those three matters, you know, over a million dollars, I believe, in, in costs. Um, some matters are resolved roughly 400,000 for, um, you know, intermediate appeals, I would say. Um, so, yeah, look, it, it, unfortunately, it's a little bit difficult to estimate, but we're talking in the hundreds of thousands rather than tens of thousands, for example. Um, the likelihood of it exceeding that and going into the millions is pretty low, I think. Okay. But in terms of man hours, um, it, quite substantial man hours. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we've expended quite an amount of time already in compliance matters for this particular site, which involves inspections and, and creation of show cause and enforcement notices. Um, the work that we've put in, in the assessment is substantial as well. So um, it's likely that the appeal will um, take quite a lot of man hours. Um, my comrade, um, Mike Simmons, will be doing a lot of that work. Um, so we'll, uh, we'll, it'll be difficult to estimate, but you know we're talking tens of hours a week, every week until it's resolved. Mm. And just to remind me, we, this is an application where we, there was a decision, I think, the year prior mm. um, for the, um, the, the composting system there. And this is, so that was put forward by New Grow. And they've come back to us wanting to do something different. That was um, mm. that's right. It, the so. The previous system was closer to being a contained in vessel <laughs> system, and the current proposal is not. Yeah. It's uh, it's 
less contained essentially, yes. uh, less contained to other systems that yep. are available. And okay. accordingly, the impacts on odour are more difficult to contain. Okay, thank you. Any other questions of Mr Bowles? Thank you, Mr Bowles. Thank you. I'll move that this report concerning applications that have been determined by delegated authority. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Kunzelman. Any discussion? I just wish to note that particular matter. I appreciate that you have every, every right, legal right to um, appeal. Um, I do note that we did approve uh, their DA when it was uh, for you know, the enclosed and vesseled composting. That was their own suggestion. They came to us and that was done a year before. Uh, they have, have amended that and we have refused it back in December on the grounds that it was substantially different development, um, that the proposed filling of the former mine void constituted a, a material change of use, that it was not geotechnically stable and it posed a contamination risk. We also outlaid that the proposed revised layout and infrastructure was a significant increase to the scale intensity of the use of the site and it dramatically changed the DA and that would impact um, filling of the former mining void, stormwater and leachate, air quality, ecology, visual amenity and screening and, and other um, um, matters as well. So, um, and obviously the residents of Ipswich are going to have to spend uh, between two hundred and eight hundred thousand dollars and lots of man hours where our staff could be doing other things to um, benefit the the, the um, our community. So I'm just going to note my disappointment. Any other discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour? Thank you. It's unanimous and carried. We go to item six, which is the Planning and Environment Court Action Status Report. May I ask for the relevant council officer to come to the lectern, please? This is a report concerning a status update with respect to the current court actions associated with development and planning applications. Uh, good morning, Anthony Bowles, Acting Development Planning Manager. Thank you, Mr Bowles. Um, may I see how things are going with the uh, matter of the judicial review for the wandless recycling? Um, I'm for, sorry, uh, unfortunately no update on the, after the hearing. Um, I don't have any further, still waiting in judgment, sorry, uh, okay. no further information I can share. Thank you. Uh, the next one is um, Axelom Capital, which is mm -hmm. on uh, Siddons Road, Deving Heights. Mm -hmm. I know so we, we made a decision as a council, they, they had an application in to um, clear some land that council had deemed a, for parkland and reserve, mm -hmm. and they wanted to build um, housing and do development there. And obviously that's being appealed. Mm -hmm. How is that progressing? Uh, we're still in the process of um, providing further particulars about the matters in dispute. Um, there's another review on the 15th of March, uh, and we'll be having, with our budget means, in between. Okay, thank you. And one I always ask about, <laughs> um, the matter of, we were, um, there were three waste companies. We were trying to get a good outcome for our residents here. And obviously the hearing concluded in August 2021. How is that going? Uh, unfortunately, we're still awaiting the judgment. Okay. Any indication of when we'll have one? Uh, unfortunately, no, no. Okay. But um, before I go down, I do actually have an update that is of note. Um, the Spring Lake Holdings matter. Yes. Um, and an update since the report was generated is that the judgment was handed down. Okay. Um, so we have received a judgment. Um, and I suppose this is an indication of a time frame because that was um, 21st of February 2022, just before a year is out. Um, so the judgment is in favour of council essentially mm. on the jurisdictional matter, which is uh, that the PNE court does not have jurisdiction to hear the main dispute. Um, and the reason for that is essentially that there are dispute resolution processes under the Springfield Sutra plan, and that's likely to be the way forward. So um, fairly brief judgment, um, but quite quite simple and quite straightforward in, in the decision making, and that um, will not be taking the matter through the court to resolve the dispute that between council and um, the applicant. But there is another, mo another way of doing that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of Mr Bowles? That's the one that took from February 2022. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's the one here. Yeah. I, th I think that's indicative of the problem was which I understand are endemic around Queensland with um, all councils. Okay, thank you. Thank you.
Um, so I will move that the Planning Environment Court Action Status Report be received and the contents noted. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, uh, Councillor Milligan. Any further discussion? No, I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. It's unanimous and carried. Um, I move that we have uh, an adjournment for 30 minutes. And I'll put that to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. So it's 9.37, so we're back at 10.07. Thank you very much.
One minute to go. <laughs> Thank you very much and welcome back to the Growth Infrastructure Waste uh, Committee meeting. Um, it's now, um, I think, 10.21, so thank you very much for, for coming back. We're now on to item eight, which is the development application. Sorry? Oh, sorry, yes. My apologies. Up to item seven, which is the Infrastructure Environment Department Capital Delivery Report, December 2022. And this is a report concerning the performance of the capital delivery by the Infrastructure and Environment Department for the month of December 2022. May I ask the relevant council officer to come to lectern, please? Good morning, Graham Martin, Acting General Manager for Infrastructure and Environment Department. Thank you, Mr. Martin. Um, again, I'm asking, obviously, we, we're seeing that the fact that um, building supplies and, and skilled labour, might I just ask the public gallery to, excuse me, I ask the public gallery just to um, not speak, please. Um, Mr. Martin, I just, with the, the costs of, of materials increasing and, and skilled labour shortages, um, are we delivering to our capital delivery program and, and within budget? Well, two answers to that question. So I'm really pleased with the way the rate of delivery is happening. So and a variety of sizes and scope of projects that are out in the community at the moment. So um, I'd say the vast majority of the jobs, the 90% of the projects are continuing on well and as planned. Um, and I don't think we're too far behind on any of the significant projects that are a major impact on the community. Um, a lot of the smaller local priority projects are, are moving ahead well and the teams are prioritising those to make sure that we keep that balance. So in terms of delivery, I'm, you know, I'm really pleased with how it's progressed this year. We did have a larger capital delivery program this year than we have had in any further year, in any previous years and we're ahead, well ahead of the of what I call an average or historical run rate on previous delivery. So from the delivery point of view, I think we're tracking very well as a, a council. Um, in terms of cost impacts, we're finding um, that there's certain projects are getting hit with significant price increases um, and we're getting some 25% increases on some of the projects that particularly those that are on longer lead times um, and it seems to be a function that the head contractor in order to lock in subcontractors for long term, they're all building in a risk factor on the pricing and what things may look like going forward. Um, the ongoing headline CPI rate of you know, around the 8%, um, building industries normally runs a little bit higher than that traditionally because of the time frames and the materials involved, is certainly scaring people. And I think there's a risk factor as well as a real factor in the price increases. So yes, we're travelling well. And yes, we've got a fair bit of work to do between ourselves as within the council to manage those costs and balance out how we prioritise projects, what projects can be delayed in terms of cash flow delivery as opposed to having to get the, the uh, arms and legs on the ground. Okay. I'm sure if that answers the question. Thank you, Mr Martin. Any other questions of Mr Martin? Um, the report foreshadows significant tightening um, on the expectation that procurement will be able to deliver um, the rollout of some of these projects. Is that a serious concern for us? The report says that you know the, the solution to that answer is in future budget variations potentially, but is that a real risk that we're, we're facing right now considering the amount of work that has to be done in the later part of the financial year? I don't think it's a systemic risk that's being uh, induced by the procurement team. It's a risk because some projects are being delayed um, and some of the uh, review times and the responses that we're getting to some of the contracts it means that our normal procurement times are extended. Um, some of the projects we're going out for, we're not getting a very good response from um, the market. So we're calling it a procurement issue, and it is, but it's not a systemic procurement team issue. It's very much about the responses we're getting from the market, and then how do we deal with those responses from the market, which can force us to go out for a second visit. 
So a bit of a difficulty in actually attracting contractors to submit a tender? In some instances, yes, that's right. There's a lot of work out there at the moment um, and contractors are being selective. I think uh, my assessment, and it's certainly not anything that's been tested too rigorously, but while we have um, flood recovery happening, you know, as it now stands from north to south and all the way to the west, there's no opportunity within markets for um, tradesmen, contractors to want to move from, you know, Sunshine Coast to Ipswich to do work or from Ipswich to the Gold Coast to do work, I can stay at home, sleep in my own bed and have more than enough work than I can handle. Previously, when we've had these sorts of um, spikes and peaks, somewhere else regionally or interstate has been quiet and so we've been able to attract contractors and tradesmen and that sort of thing from other areas and other regions. At the moment, that's, there's just no movement. There's no people moving around between regions or states. Any other questions? Right. Thank you, Ms. Martin, and thank you very much for the, the report, including the, uh, the attachments, which I think give quite a good um, visual and, and a succinct update on, on the work that's been done. Yeah, I think it does thank show you. the good spread of types yeah. of projects out there. Thank you. Thanks. So I'll move that this report concerning the performance of the capital delivery by the Infrastructure Environment Department for the month of December 2022. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Any discussion? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. It's unanimous and carried. Now we'll move on to item eight. And item eight is the development application 17522-2021-PDA. PDA Recommendation, proposed community use childcare centre at 7001 Grampian Drive, Debbing Heights. Uh, this is a report concerning a development application seeking a material change of use approval for the community use of childcare centre over land at 7001 Grampian Drive, Debbing Heights. Specifically, this report is a follow-up to a report presented to the Growth Infrastructure Waste Committee meeting held on the 13th of October, uh, 2022. And details of steps have been taken since that meeting, including the outcome of the council recommendation to consult with the Minister for Economic Development Queensland and the Minister for Police and Corrective Services about the development application. Um, so that's the, the decision that the, uh, we are at today. I will... Um, at this stage, um, move that this um, matter go to the ordinary council meeting in a fortnight's time. Do I have a seconder for that? Thank you, Councillor Doyle. Is there any discussion on the matter? No? I'll put the matter to the vote. Those in favour, please raise your hand. Thank you. It's unanimous and carried. We'll now go to notices of motion. There are none. There are no matters arising. So this meeting now closes at 10.30. Thank you. Next meeting in 10 minutes. Thank you.